So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, solving uh, exponential equations, um, in particular um, using the one-to-one -one property. Um, now, this property is, is very, very straightforward, um, but it's one that, that is, is commonly uh, used incorrectly uh, when the problems get more difficult. So you'll want to pay close attention here to uh, um, the fine print of this. Now, the one-to-one -one property says this. If you have a to the x equals a to the y, then x equals y. Um, and that's what it is. That, that's, that's what the one-to-one -one property says. Um, and as I said, it's very intuitive. Um, for example, if I gave you 2 to the x equals 8, um, it's very, very clear just by observation that x equals 3. Uh, and you can see that a little more mechanically by rewriting the 8 as 2 cubed. Now you can see the bases are the same and x would have to equal the 3, okay? So nothing really difficult there. Um, but I do want to go back, and I, I want to make sure uh, that I'm really clear about something. What I need to be crystal clear about is that the one-to-one -one property says uh, very, very subtly that you can have, or you must have, one single exponential equals one single exponential with the same base okay so in other words the one-to-one -one property is what it is as long as you have one single exponential equals one single exponential with the same base so we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, example in your notes uh, where we have 5 raised to the 4 minus x equals 1 over 125 um, it's an exponential equation, um, and our job is going to be to create um, the situation where we can apply the one-to-one -one property. So we want one single exponential equals one single exponential with the same bases. Um, I'll leave the 5 alone, and the 1 over 125 is actually going to be 5 to the negative third. So we've hit our mark now. We've got one single exponential equals one single exponential. And the bases are the same. Because of that, 4 minus x must equal a negative 3. And to solve this, we'll just go ahead and move things around, and we'll end up with an x equals 7 uh, for your final answer. All right, and the last thing that we're going to talk about in uh, this section would be a couple of applications, um, specifically periodically compounding versus continuously compounding interest problems. Um, so you can see there are two different formulas um, that are given for the different cases. Um, periodically compounding um, means that it's, it's compounding, uh, for example, daily or monthly or quarterly or yearly. Um, continuously compounding means it's compounding um, exponentially uh, on kind of on top of itself, similar to what that curve looked like uh, from the beginning of the section. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with example three. Um, example three talks about a situation where uh, things are compounded quarterly. So quarterly would imply your n value, the number of times compounded uh, per year, would be four. Uh, so if that was daily, n would be 365, um, etc. So since it's compounded quarterly, our n equals four. Uh, so we'll, we'll just need to go ahead and plug things in now. Um, we're looking for a uh, p is the starting amount uh, you might have, have heard it referred to as the principal before on interest problems but more generally think of p as the starting amount uh, so that's going to be seventy five thousand the interest rate was three percent n is four since it's quarterly uh, then we have our four times our 20 since it's it's uh, being uh, invested for 20 years uh, at which point this is just a big calculator problem uh, and so the answer once you plug this into your calculator will be uh, 136,353 dollars and 30 cents so that's the amount of money sitting in your bank account uh, at the end of 20 years now, example four talks about being compounded continuously. Uh, and as I said before, if it's continuous, there's no need for the n value. Um, we do have 
uh, the letter E in this formula, uh, which is the natural number. Uh, it's approximately 2.71828. Uh, it's an irrational number, goes on forever and ever. Uh, it's kind of like pi. So in this problem, uh, it's very similar. <clears throat> the starting amount would still be the 75,000. We'd have E raised to the interest rate of 0 0.3 times our 20 years. Now again, this is a calculator problem and you want to be very careful with how you enter it. Um, you should be ending up with an answer of $136,658.91 uh, when you plug that in your calculator.